an object from interstellar space has been observed to visit our solar system. Neil deGrasse Tyson says that Umuamua has suddenly returned, and it's not alone. Umuamua is the name of the mysterious flying object that whipped past our solar system years ago, but the way it traveled puzzled scientists for years, almost like it was not natural. Scientists believe it was a rock while some say it was gas. This thing came in moving fast, yeah, that has escape velocity, a hyperbolic orbit, but there are a few that genuinely believe that it was an alien spaceship. So join us as we uncover the mystery of Umuamua and find out if it really was a scout from another civilization. What is Umuamua? Back in October 2017, something extraordinary happened in our solar system. The University of Hawaii's Pan Stars 1 telescope made an incredible discovery, it spotted the first interstellar object known to visit our solar system, named Umuamua. Saratop Maui's Halakala volcano, the Pan Stars 1 telescope, is exceptional when it comes to spotting space rocks, even famed ones like Umuamua. The official name for it was 1I 2017U1, however, the Pan Stars team gave it a more poetic name, Umuamua. Translating from Hawaiian, it means a messenger from afar arriving first. Umuamua looked like a reddish cigar shaped object made up of rock. Its elongated shape is striking, stretching up to a quarter mile long and about ten times longer than it is wide. Umuamua has an aspect ratio that surpasses any asteroid or comet observed in our own solar system. Its elongated shape is quite surprising and unlike anything we've seen before. This unique characteristic might provide valuable insights into the formation of other solar systems. But how do we even know that this object came from outside the solar system and not just some rogue Kuiper Belt object? Neil deGrasse Tyson says that it's extremely easy to find out. It's all thanks to the speed of the object, we can tell an object is extraterrestrial if it's going very fast, too fast for it to be contained by the sun's gravity. Umuamua was traveling at a speed of 196,000 miles per hour when it got close to Earth, that is 109 times faster than a bullet, meaning there was no way this object was part of our solar system this whole time. Scientists could not tell if Umuamua was an asteroid or a comet. But what's the difference? Comets are made of ice while asteroids are rocky. Scientists first thought it was a comet, then changed their minds to call it an asteroid. Once it zoomed past the Sun on September 9, 2017, they still considered it an asteroid until additional measurements indicated slight acceleration, which is a sign of it being a comet. But the fact that Umuamua accelerated much more than we predicted was what confused scientists for years. When Umuamua made its appearance, telescopes worldwide eagerly observed it, aiming to gather as much information as possible during its brief visit. They made intriguing discoveries, the absence of visible dust or a comet tail, an unusual elongated shape ten times longer than it is wide, and a reddish color resembling objects found in the outer regions of our solar system. Observations even found the age of this object, Umuamua had been wandering alone through the cosmos of our Milky Way galaxy for hundreds of millions of years before coming to visit. As Umuamua departed our solar system, it accelerated faster than expected, surpassing the influence of gravity alone. This acceleration resembled the boost that comets experience as they move away from the sun. When a comet's ice evaporates due to solar heat, it propels the now lighter object forward, but the speed boost and trajectory of Umuamua did not follow the predictions scientists had made. The peculiar trajectory of Umuamua raises questions. Why did it follow such an odd path through space? Since its discovery in 2017, scientists have put forward various theories to explain the object's nature formation, and high velocity of approximately 196,000 miles per hour. One hypothesis suggests that Umuamua could be composed of solid hydrogen, which transforms into gas as it approaches a star, pushing the object forward. In this scenario, the entire object itself would act like a natural ion engine. Some scientists proposed the idea that the cigar-shaped object might actually have a more disc-like appearance. They based this notion on the way it accelerated away from the sun during its passage. But many planetary scientists argue that its behavior could resemble that of a comet, a phenomenon commonly observed in our solar system. Another potential explanation for this acceleration not accounted for by gravity is radiation pressure, which is the force exerted by sunlight on an object. However, for sunlight to have such an effect, the object's density would need to be extremely low. 
the unique shape and exceptionally low density of the object sparked lively discussions within the scientific community about its possible origins. Some people even entertain the intriguing possibility of the rock being an alien light sail crafted by an intelligent extraterrestrial civilization. While one scientist firmly believed that this pancake-shaped object was an alien spacecraft, such claims were met with skepticism. As with any scientific hypothesis involving intelligent aliens, there likely exists a more plausible explanation. But even so, let's take a look at how substantial this argument was. Umiamua, the first confirmed object from outside our solar system, presents one peculiar characteristic, its shape. While it is often depicted as a cigar-shaped body in artist renderings, there is a possibility that it is actually more disc-like since we could only observe it from specific angles as it traveled through our solar system, meaning its specific proportions were largely unobserved. In October 2018, Dr. Shmuel Biali and Professor Avi Lub put forward a theory that asked if solar radiation pressure could be the key to Muamua's odd acceleration. Their study underwent peer review and was accepted for publication in the Astrophysical Journal Letters, but it sparked a mixed response. Based on several lines of evidence, the duo suggested that Muamua's unusual characteristics could be explained by its pancake-like shape and highly reflective nature, resembling a light sail. Its sudden acceleration and deviation from the expected orbit aligned with the effect of radiation pressure interacting with a light sail and even the way in which it entered our solar system resembled that of an interstellar explorer. It flew by Earth after its closest approach to the Sun, its orbital dynamics provided it with a close encounter with the only habitable planet in our solar system, resembling what one might expect from an interstellar probe. Naturally, this claim stirred controversy. Some media outlets sensationalized the theory, suggesting that Professor Lubb and his colleague were proposing an alien origin for Muamua. On the other hand, there were those who dismissed the idea, wondering why a reputable scientist like Professor Lubb would even entertain something they deemed unscientific. Despite facing opposition, Professor Lubb not only stood by his argument but also went on to publish a book delving into his controversial theory and the journey that led him to it. In his book, Lubb takes a more personal and impassioned approach, appealing to both the scientific community and the general public to genuinely consider the idea that Muamua could be an extraterrestrial messenger. So, is Muamua a space probe made by an intelligent species? Let's take a look at Professor Lubb's book. After spending years presenting this contentious theory to the scientific and astronomical community, Professor Lubb shared the story behind his idea in his book. The book delves into the mystery surrounding Muamua and, most significantly, encourages readers to seriously consider the possibility of an extraterrestrial encounter. Professor Lubb described his arguments in more detail in his book, Arguments He Made Back in 2018. As Oumuamua prepared to depart the solar system, the Hubble Space Telescope captured final images that revealed an increase in its velocity. The most straightforward explanation for this phenomenon was that Oumuamua was releasing material from its surface due to solar heating, a process known as outgassing, which aligns with the characteristics of a comet. However, as Biolai and Lubb emphasized, there should have been unmistakable evidence of such activity. One confusing aspect of Oumuamua was its lack of a tail when it made its closest approach to the sun. Furthermore, the sudden acceleration it experienced couldn't be explained by gravitational forces, if anything, gravity should have been causing it to slow down. Additionally, if Oumuamua had been outgassing, it would have resulted in a rapid change in its spin, but no such violent spin was observed. According to Lubb and Biolai, the most plausible cause for the increase in velocity was radiation pressure. However, if Oumuamua wasn't a comet or an asteroid, then what could it possibly be? Moreover, what could explain all of its peculiar behavior? The only thing scientists were certain of was that Oumuamua was unlike any object ever observed before. All attempts to explain the weirdness of Oumuamua in terms of nature were paper thin. When the book was written, there was no single explanation that could account for its brightness, shape, and acceleration while also acknowledging the absence of outgassing. This idea was partly sparked by Professor Lubb's involvement in Project Starshot, a program aiming to develop a spacecraft capable of reaching the Alpha Centauri system within our lifetime. After careful consideration, they realized that using a light sail propelled by a 100 gigawatt laser was the most effective approach to achieve speeds close to the speed of light. They also concluded that the spacecraft could be as small and light as a mobile phone. 
Thus, the concept of Starshot, combining a light sail and a Starship spacecraft, took shape. When Umuamu arrived, it coincided with the fresh memory of Starshot in Lub's mind, and everything started to come together. Only after they checked and confirmed the calculations did the theory of an interstellar probe truly take form. The next step was to determine the size, composition, thickness, and reflectivity of such a probe. In the end, all the evidence aligned and pointed to one key notion, Umuamu was not of natural origin. According to Lub, the hypothesis of a light sail may appear unconventional, but the logical path he and Bailey followed did not involve any far-fetched assumptions. They carefully analyzed the evidence and adhered to a scientific principle similar to Sherlock Holmes's detective work, which stated that when you have eliminated the impossible, whatever remains must be the truth, even if it seems highly unlikely. Based on this, they put forth the hypothesis that Umuamua was an artificial object. Lub effectively presents his case for a potential interstellar light sail by examining the limited evidence available on Umuamua. While we can never definitively confirm whether Umuamua was an interstellar probe or not, it might be worth keeping an open mind about this possibility. Neil deGrasse Tyson's take, Neil deGrasse Tyson had much to say about Lub's theory. Neil has known Lub for many years and considers him a brilliant and contemplative individual. Lub ventured into the realm of the search for extraterrestrial intelligence and expressed concerns that this topic should receive more attention and funding. Many scientists want more funding, but the question is how to justify it. The argument proposing Umuamua as an alien spacecraft did not convince the majority of Lub's colleagues, but it resonated with him, which led him to write a book that captured public interest. Neil wants there to be alien life too, is equally excited about the possibility, but he cautions against assuming aliens as the immediate explanation for unexplained phenomena. Lub conducted significant research before reaching his conclusion, but there may have been additional research avenues that he overlooked due to a lack of awareness. Neil said that Lub didn't do all of his homework before presenting his theory, but to be fair, we didn't know enough back then anyway. In an interview with Star Talk, Neil discusses the peculiar nature of not having a clear understanding of how Oumuamua's trajectory was affected during its passage near the Sun. He notes that if an object is moving in a manner not dictated by gravity, there must be another force influencing it. He says that there are other explanations for it, like the possibility of ice content melting off as Oumuamua approached the Sun, but he says that he's not going to jump to conclusions and say that it's aliens. While he doesn't completely dismiss the idea, he prefers not to immediately suggest extraterrestrial origins as the primary explanation. But if not aliens, what else caused Oumuamua's odd trajectory? Hydrogen iceberg theory, in early 2020, researchers proposed a fascinating idea about Oumuamua. They suggested that it could be a hydrogen iceberg, and the origins and molecular structure of the object could be explained by this theory. The concept was that pure hydrogen gas would act like a propellant, pushing Umuamua forward like a rocket. While the hydrogen iceberg theory seemed intriguing initially, further analysis suggests that it faces challenges in terms of survivability and formation processes. A paper authored by researchers from Harvard and the Korea Astronomy and Space Science Institute cast doubt on the viability of this theory. A few researchers, including Professor A. V. I. Lub, expressed skepticism about the theory. There were various issues with the theory of a hydrogen iceberg. One significant problem was that an iceberg of this nature couldn't be formed through the usual processes that result in the creation of solid objects. The usual processes involved in creating solid objects like Oumuamua, such as sticky dust colliding and gradually accumulating, would not be applicable to a hydrogen iceberg. In order to form a hydrogen iceberg the size of a kilometer, tiny grains of hydrogen would have to collide with one another and stick together. Then this process would be repeated with larger and larger grains through sticky collisions. But the higher the density of the gas, the more heat is generated per collision, causing any solid hydrogen to be instantly turned into gas. So, a hydrogen iceberg the size of a kilometer wouldn't be able to form because the grains wouldn't be able to grow anymore. In essence, the researchers argued that the usual process of grain growth through sticky collisions is hindered by the presence of high gas density. Additionally, such an object wouldn't have been able to survive the long journey that Umuamua undertook. Hydrogen icebergs would evaporate too quickly during the journey, which could last hundreds of millions of years. If the hydrogen ice theory were true, it would have been a groundbreaking discovery, shedding light on the cigar-like shape of Umuamua and its non-gravitational acceleration during its journey. 
but scientists still had more theories up their sleeves. Dust bunny theory, in September 2020, an intriguing theory emerged proposing that the elongated space rock might be similar to a giant dust bunny. Dust bunnies are those clumps of dust and debris that gather under furniture due to static electricity. Scientists think that Oumuamua could be thought of as a scaled-up version of a dust bunny. Oumuamua might have come from a comet located outside our solar system. According to this study, the dust composing Oumuamua was blown off the comet's nucleus, gradually accumulating to form the peculiar rock. The solar radiation then propelled this rock through space, eventually leading it on a brief tour within our solar system. The original comet from which Oumuamua originated was likely a long-period comet. These comets take a considerable amount of time to complete their orbits around stars, often venturing far away from them. Due to the comet's weak gravitational pull and the pressure exerted by radiation, Oumuamua separated from its parent comet, embarking on a trajectory into interstellar space until it briefly passed through our solar system. While this theory seems convincing, scientists moved on to better ones in the future. Nitrogen Iceberg after an extensive four-year investigation and the exploration of various theories, the astronomical community seemingly arrived at an explanation that accounted for all the observations. Two studies published in March 2021 proposed a compelling case suggesting that the interstellar visitor could be a sizable fragment of nitrogen ice that broke off from a distant solar system's Pluto-like exoplanet millions of years ago during its formation. This nitrogen iceberg theory serves as a natural Explanation for Oumuamua's behavior following previous research that suggested it could be a rocky fragment from a planet torn apart by its star. These findings are a far cry from the extraterrestrial speculations that arose when Oumuamua was initially detected. Although initial skepticism was present among some researchers, the nitrogen iceberg theory aligns with many essential criteria. Even astronomers who weren't involved in the study, like Scott Shepard, acknowledged its plausibility, saying that it could indeed be a fragment of an icy dwarf planet. But the case wasn't closed yet. In their study, the researchers analyzed the behavior of various types of ice composed of hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen under similar circumstances. Surprisingly, it was discovered that a substantial chunk of nitrogen ice would exhibit the same characteristics as Oumuamua. Unfortunately, measuring nitrogen gas proved challenging for astronomers using the available telescopes at the time. The studies say that there was indeed a tail-like feature present in Oumuamua, similar to what we would expect from a comet, but we didn't detect it because of Oumuamua's nitrogen composition. The studies also identified potential sources of nitrogen icebergs. Planetary bodies such as dwarf planets and celestial objects located at the periphery of solar systems, including Pluto and Neptune's moon Triton, are known to possess nitrogen ice on their surfaces. Based on the findings presented in the two papers, the authors proposed that during the early stages of a distant solar system's formation, collisions between planetary bodies occurred, resulting in the detachment of a nitrogen chunk. Over time, this nitrogen iceberg made its way to our corner of the Milky Way. As it approached the Sun, its surfaces eroded, ultimately transforming it into a the concept of a flattened pancake-like shape put forth by the researchers was highly compelling and successfully aligned with the observations made at the time. Even other astronomers found the idea convincing and commended its ability to explain the available data. However, this theory wasn't airtight. An opposing argument was presented in a study done by Professor A. V. I. Lub and Amir Siraj. According to their paper, the fact that we detected Oumuamua implies that there are a whole bunch of them in our galaxy. But if we assume that objects like Oumuamua are formed entirely of nitrogen split from exoplutos, then there must be a lot of exoplutos to account for this. However, the number of exoplutos in our galaxy is calculated to be extremely low. So either Oumuamua isn't really made entirely out of nitrogen, or we were completely wrong about the number of exoplutos in our galaxy. The researchers checked to see whether there is a sufficient amount of material in the Milky Way galaxy to support the formation of such a population of nitrogen icebergs. The only way so many exoplutos could exist in the Milky Way is if the stars they formed around had enough leftover material to create them in the first place. This material is known as a mass budget. Simply put, this budget represents how much material is available for different kinds of celestial objects around a star. The researchers found out that for the galaxy to produce so many nitrogen icebergs, it would need to convert 10 times the mass of all the stars into just exoplutos. 
even in the most optimistic scenarios, there is no way for a star system to have enough nitrogen ice to form so many exoplutos, and even if it did, cosmic rays eventually erode interstellar space objects like Oumuamua. If you consider that into the model, the galaxy would need a few thousand times more mass than it currently has. The rebuttal paper concluded that nitrogen can no longer be considered a viable candidate. However, there is disagreement on the density of Oumuamua-like objects in our galaxy. Some scientists argue that these interstellar objects are actually less common than anticipated. Professor Lubb thinks that the density is quite high. He argues that for every 10 cubic astronomical units, there is more than one interstellar object, while others argue that there is one interstellar object for every 333 astronomical units. For reference, a single cubic astronomical unit is equal to 804 sextillion 357 quintillion cubic miles, that is, an 8 followed by 23 zeros. Depending on which number you pick, the results of the calculation change drastically. If you assume the latter density, then the nitrogen ice theory still holds weight. But regardless, scientists shifted their focus back to hydrogen as a potential explanation for Oumuamua's origin and characteristics, hydrogen outgassing. In March of 2023, a study conducted by a pair of astronomers offered an explanation for at least part of the mystery surrounding Oumuamua. Employing the principles of chemistry, according to the research team, Oumuamua was indeed a comet, although its composition was rather unconventional. The researchers proposed that Oumuamua acquired and retained H2 hydrogen gas as a result of cosmic radiation over millions of years. Through their modeling, they suggest that Oumuamua might have originated as a typical water-rich comet orbiting a nearby star before being ejected from its system. The high-energy cosmic rays found throughout the galaxy, emitted by phenomena such as supernovae and energetic events, could have converted up to 30% of the comet's water ice into hydrogen. This hydrogen gas would then have become trapped within Oumuamua's ice as it traversed interstellar space. Upon encountering even minimal heat from the sun, the trapped hydrogen gas was released, leading to a jet engine effect. This unexpected acceleration accounted for the object's peculiar behavior as it departed. Some astronomers described this research as the most convincing model put forth thus far for Oumuamua. This model suggests that the alien visitor was not as different as we once thought from comets within our solar system. The team of astronomers conducted calculations that suggested the outgassing of hydrogen could account for the peculiar acceleration observed in Oumuamua. They even discovered experimental studies from over 40 years ago that demonstrated the ability of high-energy particles such as those found in cosmic rays to extract molecular hydrogen from water ice and retain it within an icy structure. The idea presented by this study perfectly aligns with what is expected for interstellar comets. Some astronomers expressed satisfaction with the explanation, considering it the most straightforward and generic one compared to other speculative notions such as hydrogen icebergs. However, not all scientists are convinced by this explanation. Professor A. V. I. Lub disagreed with the study, claiming that they miscalculated the surface temperature of Oumuamua. According to Lubb, this led to an incorrect estimation of the available hydrogen within the iceberg. He argues that the outgassing of the available hydrogen would not have generated the observed acceleration. Currently, Oumuamua is too distant for new measurements, and it is improbable that it will return for further examination. Nevertheless, astronomers remain hopeful that more interstellar objects are waiting to be observed in the future. Plans to visit Oumuamua When Oumuamua was first discovered, astronomers were optimistic about future discoveries. The advancement of sky survey technologies, such as the PANSTARS-1 telescope that initially detected Oumuamua in 2017, would allow us to spot more interstellar wanderers like it. PANSTARS captures high-quality images of the entire sky every two to three days. This project allowed us to detect extremely faint objects, including Oumuamua. Given the swift motion of such objects, the survey's efficiency in covering the entire sky is crucial. After all, the window for observing Oumuamua within our solar system lasted only a few weeks. So, it seems we may have the opportunity to encounter additional celestial interlopers, expanding our understanding of the vast cosmos, thanks to this systematic sky survey. But so far, astronomers have confirmed the presence of only two interstellar interlopers, Oumuamua in 2017 and Borisov in 2018. However, it is widely believed that numerous others exist.
Unfortunately, scientists have had limited opportunities to study these objects once they are discovered. To address this, NASA sees great potential in the James Webb Telescope, which could revolutionize our ability to study interstellar interlopers. The power and sensitivity of the James Webb Telescope will give us an opportunity never seen before in investigating the chemical compositions of interstellar objects. This exploration could unveil valuable insights into their origins, formation processes, and the conditions prevailing in their home systems. These objects hold a wealth of knowledge, and the James Webb Telescope will allow us to tap into that treasure trove. Studying new interstellar travelers is crucial because the fleeting nature of Oumuamua allowed scientists to observe it in our solar system for only a brief period. If we're able to detect and examine more objects like Oumuamua, we will be able to confirm or deny the various theories laid out by scientists about the formation of such objects. While we can observe these objects, what about visiting them? There is significant enthusiasm among some individuals regarding the prospect of reaching these interstellar interlopers. Scientists have put forward a plan to study these objects as they traverse the solar system. The consensus among scientists is that acquiring a sample from these objects would be a remarkable achievement. Some have even proposed a method that involves launching a rocket into orbit and waiting for an object to come by. Once an object is detected, the spacecraft could then rapidly accelerate toward the interstellar traveler. The European mission known as Comet Interceptor is going to do exactly that. It's going to stay around the orbit of the moon and wait for an interstellar object to fly through our solar system again. Hopefully, we'll be ready for the next Oumuamua. Where did Oumuamua even come from? The discovery of Oumuamua was a significant achievement for humanity and was officially announced to the public in November of 2017. We found direct evidence of the existence of interstellar objects for the first time after decades of theoretical speculation. As of March 2023, Oumuamua is past Neptune's orbit and is currently heading toward the Pegasus constellation, never to be seen again. It's so far away now that no telescope in our arsenal can derive any meaningful observations from Oumuamua, so we'll never truly get to the bottom of its mystery. But where did Oumuamua come from in the first place? Initial calculations of Oumuamua's orbit indicate that it likely originated from the general direction of the bright star Vega 300,000 years ago. But Vega was not in the same place it is now 300,000 years ago. Even if Oumuamua was going as fast as 59,000 miles per hour when it entered our solar system, it couldn't have covered this distance in a short amount of time. So, we don't know for sure. Where do you guys think Oumuamua came from, and what theory sounds the most convincing to you? Let us know below and stay tuned for more.